Why Bitcoin Cash? What is Bitcoin Cash good for? Well, just like Bitcoin, with a small adjustment, Bitcoin Cash makes it the digital equivalent of cash. Bitcoin Cash is a fast, secure, worldwide, peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system with low processing fees. Bitcoin was just the first step. Bitcoin Cash is the next. Bitcoin Cash believes peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash is a useful tool towards economic freedom. So check out Bitcoin Cash at whybitcoincash.com. Welcome back, everybody. Jiu-Jitsu Motivation Podcast. My name is Greg Melita, Black Belt, owner of Hamptons Jiu-Jitsu. And I'm Brian DeLuca, Black Belt and author of Jiu-Jitsu for Small People and Other Weird Shit I Think About. Which doesn't count for this podcast because we have Tex Johnson on with us today, the famous baseball bat breaker, um, the famous heel hooker of one Felipe Pena at Kasai. Uh, welcome aboard, man. We have a lot of, uh, we've hung out a lot. I've seen you a lot and uh, really cool to have you on finally. <laughs> Always great to be on a podcast with uh, with anybody, but especially with you, Mike. Um, Always awesome to get to talk to you. Um, I've never met Brian. Who are you talking about? You. <laughs> it's always great to hang out with you. I know, man. I know. We got uh, we got some good uh, stuff for today. I wanted to bring in, you know, a couple of um, questions for you specifically. But uh, we got you at a dinner. Is that what you just slammed the Heineken? What's going on? A, a diner. A diner. I'm, I'm just having like, I was going to have a beer because I was like, you know what? I just got stem cells yesterday. Gonna, you saw that, beer, beer, and you relax. need a beer. Yeah, uh, you know, I have Tex a beer Johnson now, so. with stem cells. I can't imagine this. I well, let's see what they do. I'm going to next week, next Thursday, to get my my uh, upper spine done, and uh, so they did L three through the sacrum all the way down. I had six. Six herniated disc from the slam is what they wow. were saying, and fractured fractured bones, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was it was fun to say the least, you know, to go wow. through that. It's yeah, crazy. man. So I saw, I saw those uh, photos on Instagram, man, yeah. of them uh, sticking that needle in you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I'm not gonna. Yeah, like I said, I'm actually gonna kick this off with an, a crazy Tex Johnson story. All right, just to just to. Oh God kick this off all right so uh for, for those of you guys who don't know i'm part of the kasai management team and being a part of kasai the best team. one of the best teams one yeah of the best and, ever to run a program yeah you know, you know being or, a part of that was amazing and we went out as a part of the kasai team we went out to nogi worlds and uh, i was myself <laughs> oh, ceo yeah ceo rich burn and we're hanging out i mean we would you know go back with text on all the kasai shows of course we're going to be hanging out when we uh, are in california for the world so tex is fighting he finishes up his division and then mm -hmm. me and tex and rich go out to lunch right we just get uh get one of those subway shops now tex down slams down a freaking foot long hoagie no, no, 16 out. inch they were 16 inches at that one i remember those were the huge subs it was 16 yeah. inches 16 I inches. Like, i thought they only made 12 inches but whatever right yeah he, he went to the next step down to 16 inch freaking sub hoagie whatever you want to call it packed out so uh then proceeds to be like hey guys i'm just gonna jump in the absolute division <laughs> <laughs> we're like well i'll Damn, man! Why you? Just, but you just downed a fucking sixteen-inch sub. Now you're gonna run right in and and fight in the black belt absolute division of the Nogi Worlds. Holy yeah, shit! No, let's, no. let's see what happens. And fight and fight and fight two-time ADCC champion Yuri Simones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no less. Yeah, <laughs> but just sitting there. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna do absolute. And we're like, boom! All right. So we go over there. We go over to the uh, to the arena right across the street. And his text is warming up, but he's got he's like blowing his nose. He's like. It's like blowing his nose, <laughs> and I know what happened. And 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 me and Rich are like, what the fuck? Like, but like really hard, like not just blowing his nose. There's lettuce. Like, there's lettuce. There's yeah, like something's lettuce stuck in there. Like, I, and, and he's warming up. He's about to fight. He's about to fight Yuri <laughs> Samoa. <laughs> oh my God. And he's and he pulls out. He pulls out this long, freaking piece of lettuce. <laughs> Uh, and I'm, and he's like, all right, I'm good to go. I'm good to go, man. It's like then, when, it's like when your dog eats string and you have to pull it out of its butt, you know? <laughs> he goes out, he has his first match, 
and uh, comes back, and then he's he's like, now he's feeling warmed up, just had his first match, and he absolutes. Then he's arguing. Like, yeah. He's I arguing with some go. random yes. random dude who just happens to be a fan right behind the fence, starts arguing about politics and Trump, yelling at the guy. <laughs> Does that happen? That happen? No. Like, come on. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Well, he I'm telling you that though. He, he oh no, he probably he did. He probably <laughs> did. I, oh god, I don't even. But know my point is, saying. is you just had your first match in absolute. You oh. just slammed a 16 inch, and then yet, who cares? I'm going to argue with this guy about politics. <laughs> my next match, <laughs> my next match is Yuri Samoas, but I don't give a shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, I had three matches. I had three matches. So the first guy I submitted really fast with a with a steam lock. That was mm -hmm. Ben Hodges. Or Hoskin, the guy from Australia, really mm -hmm. cool guy. And then I fought David Garmo, and I couldn't submit him. And that one was fucking tiring <laughs> because I was already fucking tired. And he just didn't stop. And I was like, "Fuck, dude! Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, man! Like, like you're the little engine that could. That's just not gonna win this match." And I'm like, "Can you just? I wish people would just give up sometimes." On themselves, you know? but I love it that they don't. Like, I love it that they don't. Though sometimes too, like I just saw this, this thing was like, I really wanted to fight you longer. And he's like, then why did you fucking submit me? It was in the UFC. This is a big fucking match, and the guy's like, why did you submit me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I fought Yuri, and then Marillo fought Yuri in the finals. Uh, actually, it was funny. I got to I got to actually fight the guy who fought my professor at the time mm -hmm. in the finals. So that was kind of nice. Uh, nice closeout for that. But yeah, that was a crazy. That was a crazy day, <laughs> crazy weekend. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like you talking to me when we rolled. And you know, hey, Greg, you're the little engine that could, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. We had uh, we had Tex out over at uh, Hampton Jiu Jitsu a couple times. It was awesome. And um, so yeah, actually, let's let's go into some history, man. How did you wind up getting into Jiu Jitsu? You know that that whole thing. Oh. I mean, it, it started before jujitsu. So I did Taekwondo when I was younger and my dad has like six black belts. He's part of that era that would like, they train small circle jujitsu or close, like close combat jujitsu, stuff like this. He did army combatives and stuff like that back in the, the ranger days. He was drafted there in Vietnam. So one of the things that my dad like really had for me was a martial arts sense of like we would do tai chi we would do fucking these bullshit martial arts that i you know if they got in a fight with anybody right now you know you just they, they there's never been a tai chi master winning a fucking ufc or a ninja or any <laughs> of that shit but we we, we did it and i just got hey I got it's about the mind it's about the mind and spirit you know Come right on. so i got i got to see <laughs> i got to see these things i got to see these things like what martial arts were my dad wasn't a spiritual guy he wasn't like my dad was just you know I'm going to show you some things and we would, we would do like hand drills and stuff like that inside positioning. It's funny that it's so now known about inside positioning when Kung Fu was talking about it so fucking long ago and nobody mm -hmm. fucking just said it in jujitsu. It's all John was like, Jesus Christ guys, inside positioning. And it's like inside passing inside this. And it's like, yes, guys would get, yeah, yeah. Like I got it, but then it's like, it did. It opened up a whole new like way. Like, there's no denying that John Gordon, Eddie Cummings, and all those guys, those guys fucking, I mean, the AOJ guys had it too. Like, they, they knew kind of jujitsu as well as it was going to be taught. And then you have, like, some gyms like Marillo Santana that, like, I guess, like, kind of flew under the radar. He kind of just doesn't want to be seen by people. And he just, he leads a great team. So that's when I found it was with Marilla because I had been taught by so many instructors, this guy, that guy. And I'm like, man, so I got to figure out why I wanted to just, so I actually started at this really small gym because I was like, damn, I really want to start doing martial arts again. <laughs> so I went to the gym and they were like, all right, it's $150 a month for jujitsu. And I'm like, yeah bullshit no way I'm not gonna do that so they're like okay you can do cardio kickboxing for 25 dollars a month so i'm like run it 
I'll do cardio <laughs> kickboxing. <laughs> yeah, like whatever. Like, man, like mm-hmm. I was actually like a tough dude in my city. Like I beat people up on the weekends normally. Like that's right. I went out drank and beat people up. Like that's what I did. So I was like, fuck it. I gotta do something else on the weekends. Like <laughs> you know, something a little more most constructive. People, most, <laughs> yeah, something a little bit more constructive. I'm, I'm pretty much tired of going to jail, so we'll do something else. Right. Um so I, I started kickboxing at this gym and it was taught by a Muay Thai uh, guy you know obviously he had to teach the kickboxing classes because he wasn't making enough money fighting you know mm-hmm. obviously to not teach so um that's where it started and he was like bro you're gonna you're gonna start taking Muay Thai I was like bro no I'm not because I can't afford it he's <laughs> like we'll sponsor you and I was like bet all right whatever that means so like <laughs> yeah. apparently he talked to the owner and the owner was like hey uh we got this guy he's wrestled we think he, they're like we know we can make him a fighter he he's mm-hmm. he can fight it doesn't matter like so um then we got a new new instructor and this guy was like hey does anybody want to like put on some mitts or something and like fight or like boxing gloves so we put 12 ounce gloves on no mouth guards <laughs> and fucking just wrecked each other. And we did this a couple uh, of times before I was like, you know, this is fucking stupid guys. Like I, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I, we can beat each other up. We can, you know, mm-hmm. and then they were like, well, you have a wrestling background. You're way too big for, to fight Muay Thai, unless you're going to like really devote your life to Muay Thai. And I was like, I really don't want to. And they're like, start jujitsu and fight MMA. So, like, I was one of their, like, first guys at this gym that they were like, yo, we're going to make this guy an MMA successor. Like, he's going to go to the UFC, all this stuff. My MMA career ended in CES and in Bellator and stuff like that. So, not too shabby. But I I found jiu-jitsu to be uh, a really mindful thing. Like, it, it, it really works my mind. Mm-hmm. And it's the one thing that makes me happy a lot of times too like i get to be cerebral where most people probably don't see me as that kind of person because i i i come i guess i do come off you know with my my opinions but yeah i got into won't get off too off talking but i got into jujitsu uh starting to fight mma and uh, i had a really fast path to blue belt i don't even know how long maybe maybe even three months till i got my blue belt I did my first my first Muay Thai fight and all that stuff. I did that like three weeks after starting training. I just – there was nothing – you wouldn't tell me to go – like if my coach said, hey, Tex, you're going to fight in three weeks, I'd be like, okay, cool. Like <laughs> what, what, what do I fucking know? Like I don't right. fucking make the decisions here. I mm-hmm. think that like – you know, I and, and I guess now like it's not as much like that anymore. It's more individualized for people to make their own brand now because all the social media and it's like i kind of always just look for yo so what am i supposed to be doing like like hey like because that's why we had affiliations and stuff you know like yeah why else be affiliated with a team if you're not like you know there's some sort of brand here there's there should be company these are corporations Kind sometimes, you know, if they're working it smart enough, they have corporations or they have yeah. LLCs. Mm-hmm. And there's ways of paying your athletes. All these gyms should learn how to do that. And if they're not learning how to pay your fucking athletes, then Kick Rocks, your hobbyist gym, good for you. You make money. Mm-hmm. But there needs to be a better way for professionals and the way those gyms are ran professionally at all. Like, there are so many issues in the sport right now mm. that are just. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. I mean, you, you bring that up. So, like, that's exactly like I can't tell you how many times I talk with either guys that I've trained with or my students. It's like, you know, all oh, the, the, you know, a, a hobbyist gym versus a professional environment. It's two different things. You know, like there's some guys that come in and they're like, oh, you know, these guys aren't serious, and I gotta find better training partners. It's like these guys are hobbyists, and you're a professional. You know what? We're gonna have our own, you know, competition. You know, pro right. class. We already has pro class, right? For a reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, Different level. and, and, and that was the thing when, when I first went to unity and started doing pro training, you know, there was a pro training every day, rain, sleep, shine, fucking, I don't care if it was negative eight degrees outside. I don't give off what time 
you know, it was pro training mm -hmm. right there. And then there was pro technique for the guys that had to work jobs at night. And that's all accredited to Marillo. I, I, dude, the guy that would fucking wake up and come in and teach the 10 a.m. class. And then, man, he was a competitor, too. So guess what? I got to He's got to get his fucking shit in and he's got to mm -hmm. get his uh, time. So, yeah, I mean, it's you talk about Marillo. That, that guy is a samurai. Uh, well, that guy is a samurai. Is the, the saints of saints. And yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, but you bring Murillo up. He, you know, I see, I just started seeing him come on the scene with this insane over under pass, just smashing the hell out of any, uh, you know, everybody. Well, and then I, it was, you know, yeah. You you look into, you go back down into his training where he trained in Brazil, and then it seemed like their format was like an hour straight of rolls of eight minutes on and two minutes off, and then there was other sessions where it was just drilling, nothing else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, for That's an hour I one time. Yeah, because I watched Cicero one time, and I I I argue this thing because Cicero, like I I asked Merle about Cicero. And he's like, yeah, like you know, sometimes it's just you drilling, and that's it. And then he doesn't really teach that much. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? How does he produce all these amazing people? And I think that's another a modern flaw with some some jujitsu coaches because they fucking know everything because their ego is so fucking big. I'm just I don't need to learn a lot from anybody, but like some of these guys who teach jujitsu, I'm like, bro, I mean, if you've never lost, then, then fucking, you know, if you're so good, then why aren't you competing? Well, I'm too busy to compete. I'm like, yo, you got Lovato, you got fucking Zanji. You, I mean, where's your excuse yeah. again? I forgot where the fuck your excuse went again. <laughs> oh, I'm too old and beaten down. Oh, again like i mean mm -hmm. dude yes if you're 65 i get it but dude again when i when i was at alliance atlanta fucking jacare would train with lucas lepre bernardo Freya, leo noguera at 65 years old with a fucking heart thing and all this like dude shut the fuck. if you're gonna train you're gonna train so i think i've become a little like uh yeah. nihilist towards like a nihilist towards it sometimes it's like dude if you want to fucking train go fucking train it's like at the end of the day yeah i have six herniated discs in my back i can train but what is it going to do to it how am i going to feel later on risk is reward at a certain point you know mm -hmm. but when you're having complications where you're 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 dribbling piss on yourself you're like oh okay like you know like those only those things only get worse the uh we were talking about Murillo and, yes. you know, that whole method down in Cicero Casa in Brazil. I mean, you know, you yeah. saw a lot of videos down there, how they were training just so different. It was a different I, style I, of pro training. I, yeah, I, you know? I had to, I started watching the videos. And when I started watching the videos of those guys, I was like, that's, that's where I want to be. You know, it's like the whole Pedago thing. It's like Pedago's like cool right and it's like yeah but it's yeah. been done in a way worse situation you you guys don't even understand oh we we live in a by a laundry mat oh yeah do you they live in a fucking third world country pretty much dude like manaus like yeah <laughs> they get a hundred dollars a month maybe like you guys have show your role as a sponsor cry me a fucking river you fucking <laughs> kids like i'm sorry to say it but like that was yeah. like what they built that on was like these guys are suffering Okay, well, they chose that suffering. Mm. And then people ate that shit? Like, you really ate that as a fucking uh, a TV show? Like, cool. Like, I'll go watch some dating show, too, about some chick that can't get laid. So she <laughs> has to go to an island. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> like, I don't, who buys this bullshit? Mainstream life? I don't know. I don't buy it. I guess that's why I'm, I'm me and I'm here and then... Greg's there. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, so, is the way it is. Yeah. yeah some, I, um, some people just love it, man. I think I think there's people that just eat up just that random, random ass drama is, shit is, that I don't know. Maybe it makes them feel better about their lives. I have no freaking clue. I really that's because it, it it's it's the sickness of attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I do. I remember one of the best, I think the best thing I got from Marillo is don't do things for attention. Don't do life for attention. Mm -hmm. Do it, do it for you. Yeah. Like fuck yeah. all these people 
are they're do, it's so sad when they get to their deathbeds they're going to be like why did i do this they're mm. going to look at their instagram well, you know what it's the sixty thousand followers and be like oh well i made nine million dollars selling dvds okay cool mm-hmm. but you know why yeah. did you do well, it I, think I mean i guess i mean if that was the reason then go ahead but yeah I, don't know. I think so many people out there just like distraction, dude. They just like distraction. It keeps them it keeps them away from like thinking about whatever their real problems are or dealing with themselves or working on their own goals. You know, they they sit there with and they spend so much time on these other distractions in life. Mm. For sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that that's a deep one, yeah. Sorry, man. <laughs> oh, we can yeah. dude, I love deep conversations. <laughs> Look, Greg, Greg knows, Greg. <laughs> Heck no, I love the deepest conversations we can go. Existential we, fucking life. Yeah, yeah let's do it. <laughs> you uh well actually let's I actually was thinking about the uh somebody was showing me the other day, one of my students. You ever see this guy he broke a baseball bat with with, the, <laughs> with an ankle lock? I'm like, Yeah, he's been here a couple of times, one of my new students. So how did that what who did that video again and then um posted it? Well you did it. I mean obviously uh, but Wow, I did it, but my friend, my friend, my friend Frisco, actually my friend Frisco at Gracie Baja El Paso, go check them guys out in Gracie Baja um, in El Paso. I, I love those guys. So I, I was in New Mexico for a stint with my, my wife at the time, and I call Eddie, and I'm like, Eddie, the fuck, what the fuck do you think it'll, I'm going to break a baseball bat with a straight ankle lock. Because we're talking physics here, so I'm gonna Eddie I'm gonna Cummings, right? Eddie Cummings. About, yeah, I call Eddie Cummings. Yeah, I call him, and he's like, he's like, Tex, I totally think you can do that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but like, what does it matter? Because if it doesn't matter, why do it? Because if I can't break a tip fib, then I'm not. I don't fucking care. Like, if it won't tap right. somebody, he's like, bro, he's like, it'll definitely tap. You know, he's like, people tap to your straight ankle lock, and I was like, all right, cool. So I'll break the bat. So here's the thing. The funny thing is, is and I didn't do this on purpose, but now when people roll with me, they think about a baseball back breaking every time I go for a straight ankle. Lock. It's just, <laughs> you like can't, that. you can't, it got, it got, it got over a million views. How could you not think about it? Like, mm-hmm. dude, like this guy's brick, dude, uh, Joe, Joe Bays just broke two in a row. Like I had a setup to break two and I'm like, fuck it. I'm just, I'm over it. Like, yeah, we can do mm-hmm. three, four, you know, like after I did it, Gordon's like, yeah, I'll break three brats in a row. I was like, you can't. Like, there's no way because of the I'm looking at the physics of it. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, what, mm-hmm. okay, okay, cool. Like, so it just, it became like this thing. Like, as soon as I broke the bat, even Gordon was like, yo, like, I mean, if I did, I'd break it. It was like, dude, like, just, the, it wasn't even that hard. That's what I told people. After, <laughs> at the end of the day, when I told people about it, I was like, dude, it really wasn't that hard. Like, yeah. just go do it, you know? Like, it, it's yeah. cool though. I mean, dude, it looks fucking cool. Like the watermelon <laughs> thing, like all the guys doing the fucking watermelon or like the yeah. egg and the bicep. It's like, yes, okay, cool, yeah. But, you know, it was it was it was definitely exciting, you know, because I rolled with Josh Hinger and, and I put him in a straight ankle lock. He's like, I just all I could fucking see text. He's like, all I could see <laughs> was that baseball brat break. And I'm like, that's it? I was like, you couldn't find a defense for it? I'm like, all right, that's, that's good enough for me. So it was like this, like, it's a nice little trick then, you know? Right. Everybody should go do it. At least everybody should go do it. It'll scare somebody. I mean, but you have to block all that. But you have to block all that shit out as a as a as an athlete, as a human. Yeah. You know, but mm-hmm. it gets personal, it gets weird. You know, jujitsu is in a in a in a weird area where it's it's getting on the cusp of like there's gonna be some people fighting pretty soon and it's it's getting like the way people are talking to each other like the way people especially promoters like mo talks about it man these promoters and athletes i mean athletes are fucking three madonnas too but (laughs) i mean how how do we how do we make this sport relevant as it really wants to be Mm -hmm. is what i keep thinking because i mean Congratulations, Gordon got a hundred thousand dollars sponsorship for a one-off deal. But you know what? What does that do for our sport as a whole? And that's right. that's what I want to know. Like, and that's mm. conversations I'd like to have with people. You know, like mm-hmm. yeah. numbers and stuff. Like, well, speak, speaking of that, but, I mean, that's one sponsorship. But and it's not. You know, it's it's obviously like this. But, flow, on the whole. but flow blocks all the numbers, so you can't find out what your ratings are. Mm-hmm. 
So exactly. they, won't, they won't give you any, and that's, I mean, I get it. I mean, uh, we don't want to give you guys any power. Mm-hmm. That's what they said. Like, oh, we, then you'd have to know what you're going to be able to make. And I'm like, yeah, like, I think, you know, like, we should all know what we're supposed to be making. So, um, so they don't give you any stats. Say, uh, uh, this is something I don't know. They don't give you any stats. No, you're not allowed to see any other viewership numbers. So anytime mm-hmm. you go to a sponsorship or something, they're going to ask, well, what's the viewership numbers? What's your right, Instagram right. Exactly. following? What's yep. this? You know, I mean, when you're so, talking. But Flo doesn't give that. They re- need, Flo doesn't they give you not. details on that? Wow. They will that's not. interesting. They will not. Nope. That's yeah, interesting. That's, well, that's the thing. Well, like, because they're doing the sport. You know, well, that, think bro. about it. Think about it. Like, think about that, right? So, flow just like YouTube or whatever. You have your own YouTube channel. You, you know your numbers, so you could go and you could pitch that as but, you know being an immediate entity yourself, but, right? Being a personality. Mm-hmm. If flow gave you the data, it just actually helps them even to help you go sell. Right. I more. mean, I mean, that's crazy. That's what. That's right, Greg. That's what you would think, right? So I'm. I, I know that they uh, they won't do that. So. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things it does. It does hurt us because, like you said, like we don't want you guys to have any power. Pretty right. much. I mean, so. But I think that well, outside sponsorship uh, that Gordon got from Bitcoin uh, Cash. Meanwhile, we just had our last, our last podcast was with the guy, uh, Roger Beer, um, who was part of that sponsorship that sponsored Gordon on the last show. He's going to come out in a couple of weeks. And uh, But it, start, it takes things like that outside companies like that, outside of Flow and big companies that are in our sport right. to open it up. You know? Right. And, and, and how do we – how does our sport collaborate in anything? Because yeah. it's pretty much reached uh, – it's it's reached the point where like why hasn't it gone there yet? Mm-hmm. And I think it's all greed. I think everybody's just really greedy and weird. And it's just it's like I was talking like people like sponsorships. Like people act like they're just like oh you know we need to keep these away from people. And like they're like why? Mm-hmm. Like it was like at one point, like people were assigned exclusive deals with companies, and it's like, well, what is it going to get you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, honestly, yeah. like, and then like people were like talking about it, like, well, I was like, unless it pays you enough money that year, like you would have to ask for you know fifty, sixty thousand dollars up front plus you know whatever you know, mm-hmm. yeah, per match, you know, it'd be like sixty thousand plus a thousand for every win, hopefully or something like that, and then your sponsorships and everything. But here's the deal. You couldn't get any data on what Kasai was going to see, what your name was going to see, mm-hmm. who, like, who, who, whose name on the card that you knew, like, hey, dude, I'm on a court. I'm on card with Gordon. I know at least this many people are going to see it probably. Right. Right. Like, yeah. I, I'm in Dallas at the bomb factory and I know it's pulling a good showing, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and it's, and it's finding market data. That was one of the best shows, by the way. That, (laughs) yes, that's the plane trip. That is the Kasai plane trip. Yes, sir. That is legendary, that show. (laughs) Um, We had had you, me, Rich, uh, Big Gord at the time, rest in peace. Donaher. Donaher. On the initial. Was Donaher, no, yeah, I'm talking about the, yeah. 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 That was a, that was Levi, barbecue. The hottest, yeah, the hottest, the hottest, like stewardess that <laughs> dad was just all over, uh, and I'm like, Jesus. big, big Gord, big Gord's line of the week was with the stewardess on the plane was. Uh, now I'm gonna paraphrase it, but Big Gord said something to the effect of, "I, uh, I made two world champions. Uh, can you help me make a third? <laughs> yes, yes, that was the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I already uh, have two world champions. Do you want to make another with me? Yeah, and I was That's sitting there funny. because I'd moved from the front of the plane to the back of the plane to go sit with him and and sip on vodka and cranberry juice or whatever the whatever we were drinking, whatever he was, whatever he we were drinking together. We were me and Gordon's dad were having a fucking good time, and we were in our <laughs> own little world. You guys bonded. You guys, bonded. we we loved each other. What the fuck? Yeah. Big Gord, I don't know if people know, but Big Gord became famous from that Kasai show because yeah. when we got off the plane, I took the group picture with everybody. <laughs> and we're going to bring this up on the podcast. I took the group picture of everybody and Gordon's, Gord, Big Gord's face, because he had a few drinks, was so funny. And I zoomed in on it and put it in the Kasai story and it went viral. <laughs> yeah, because Gordon posted it like six times 
like yeah. superimposed. Like he superimposed it like six yeah. times and got closer and closer. Because his mouth was just like <laughs> we, we have had a few, a few, a few, a few drinks. A few. Oh man, yeah. That was uh we're gonna bring up a couple of those clips we have when we finally put this yeah, to production. Absolutely. But I don't wanna I don't wanna forget uh when you brought up in the in the beginning of the show, while it's on my mind, you brought up uh inside control. Yeah. Now and you were saying how that, like, you know, Mendez Brothers were doing some time, like, inside control, maybe probably for the Baron Bolo, putting in that hook or something. But you said before Donaher was big about inside control with the legs. You didn't really you didn't really see that before that. Is that the point you were getting at? Yeah, but it's still inside control. Your foot has a hook just like a hand. So by using inside control and pivoting and turning your heel to a side, it acts as a, a different kind of leverage. Like when you step into a guard for a knee cut or a leg drag, your knee needs to be pointing towards the outside, you know, and then it turns to the inside as you drag it inside. So mm-hmm. the it's just the little things that I've I've picked up from like Marilla. It's just like a, hib- a, a pivot with your heel mm-hmm. and and the way your knees turned. Yeah. So that was that was a honestly with. Uh, with learning that, with inside control, that's why, I mean, one of the best ways of passing is knee cutting. You know, yeah. for knee cutting, it was one of those things, but once you once you learn knee cutting, you learn hip smashing. And it's always forward pressure. And off of knee cutting, I have a very good system for, uh, after, off of the knee cut, I have a over under pass that I turn it into, a Sao Paulo passing system that I work off the knee cut and under and over under passing. So it's kind of funny because I don't really pass guard because I don't really need to. I'll play I'll play guard because it's so much easier normally to just pull guard. I get that out of the way. It's like uh, <laughs> I'm where I want it to be anyways, bro. Like, come on. Like, let's just – you have to do something. But I've gotten in trouble in a couple of matches. Maybe I haven't been aggressive enough. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Whatever. So um, <laughs> I, I, I just want to get right to the fight anyways. And I, I guess think – people think like stand-up battles are are like a war i guess but a lot of them are just terrible wrestlers smacking each other in the face and Mm -hmm. i'm like i'm only gonna take like two of those before you just get slugged so like i'm just gonna take the middleman out like we're just not Mm -hmm. gonna do this because i've seen the way wagner does it i've seen Mm -hmm. the way these guys do it i'm like that's not a fucking collar tie no yeah that's a shoulder punch a shoulder uh, palm palm smack palm smack and it's like funny like, match, oh, it's, you know? it's like it's a combative sport so i'm like okay cool so you chose a palm i chose a fist cool story <laughs> right <Can> we, we'll... <laughs> escalation right. Uh, no 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 just misunderstanding <laughs> misunderstanding yeah. i don't maybe i don't understand jujitsu i didn't know what it was it's was right. a non-contact sport of 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 rolling it's gentle art no i'm just kidding it's not <laughs> but on top of that but like yeah you see these guys like dude like when when Yuri was kicking me in my fucking match and I'm looking at the dude, I'm like, that is mm-hmm. not a foot sweep. That is an inside like I've done Muay Thai, bro. Inside, like, leg, inside leg kick. Yeah. Right. Inside leg kick. And I'm like, dude, I'm not like but mm. if it I will we can't escalate this though. I don't want to. <laughs> Obviously, I'm trying to stay in the ramifications. The rules will you. Right. And and I think people like I'm very calculated. Like mm-hmm. honestly, I am. Like if 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 something's gonna happen, like I've already conduced, like, or tried to conduct the risk, mm-hmm. whether it's legal, this, whatever. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, fuck, if I hit this guy right now, it's just assault. <laughs> yeah. It's whatever. It's you know, assault, but, and it's yeah, on yeah. camera. Yeah. I know I'm going. It's you know, on flow. Yeah, right, it's on flow. And, but they won't give you your numbers, you know? No. Yeah. <laughs> but, dude, that, that whole thing with, um, you know, I think people they want these stand up wars, right? What they want is they want they want to see takedown action like like we had with Gary Tonin and Canuto in ADCC. Well, they don't want to see clubbing just, and slugging. Right. You know well, what that's I mean? just well, that was just two really athletic guys that are decent wrestlers, good wrestlers that match to good pace. That's all that really means. Yeah. Because if you put a great wrestler against any jujitsu guy, <laughs> you saw Gordon versus uh what's his name, right? Like Come on. Oh, uh, Downey? Yeah. Was it Downey? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 It, you can't do anything with him. And then the other guy, Kyle or 
What's the other guy? That, the third coast grapple. Oh, uh, well, they, one guy fought Nicky Ryan. That was Tony Ramos. Um, but then, um, yeah, that was uh, Downey and Gordon. And, there was, yeah, there was another guy in there, a good wrestler. But uh, then he, like, submitted him after that or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you saw you saw Pat – no, Pat Downey against uh, Nicky Rod. Yeah. Uh, one. And it was just like – I've rolled with Olympic wrestlers, Olympic caliber. Um yeah, I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, you're gonna get taken down. It's and they're just so much more technical on the stand up. We're just because jujitsu doesn't work for wrestling, mm -hmm. and wrestling wrestling does work for jujitsu. Mm -hmm. But it's it's being able to chain it together from the upper and lower positions and maybe and and, and it's all spatial awareness. Mm -hmm. in in the action of mm -hmm. what's happening whether it's a hand grip to the hip or a hand grip to the shoulder line or a mm -hmm. cross body grip to the shoulder line that's all relative to where you're at on the human yeah. where you're at in the role and in the movement so that's it yeah do you, do you think people come, like that come from a wrestling background have definitely a better awareness of spatial relations to where their body is to where everything is of course, why wouldn't they? Just like any martial arts, I started punching people in the face at a young age. I I really, like, it doesn't, like, I started Taekwondo at, like, eight, mm -hmm. you know? Like, my, when I was in Taekwondo, I didn't know what the, I didn't know what the fuck we were there for. Right. So they would, like, <laughs> say we're sparring, and I'm like, I just gotta win? Well, fuck this kid. Whap! <laughs> <laughs> Tex yeah, just Aaron, or Aaron. They call, I wasn't text yet. I wasn't text yet. Sorry. The Aaron just <laughs> kicked this kid in the face really hard. Yeah. And my mom's like, "What did you tell him to do?" And they're like, "Well, we told him to kick him in the head." He's like, "There you go." Yeah, I have to head. say, Aaron he isn't. Said, you told I think him to Aaron isn't as like, mean sounding as lightly. Yeah. <laughs> um, which Aaron is a what? Yeah. Uh, what was I thinking? Oh, go back to what you what we were just talking about. That's another thing that you mentioned. Where, which, by the way, I gotta say, what? if anybody rolls with Tex, it is mind blowing because it's not what you expect. You don't expect this huge, strong dude oh, yeah. that breaks baseball bats to pull and sit on bottom and start inverting and 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 like doing all of the bottom stuff that the small guys love to do. You just mm -hmm. don't expect it. This guy, when you roll with Tex. He is lasso inverting. I mean, it, it's just, it's it's kind of like totally unexpected and so yeah, cool you, to see. And um, so go back. You said before, like when you do your, the, the leg inside control and pummeling, sometimes if I pull guard on text, he's going to pull two and pummel and then come up. Mm -hmm. and he's already mm -hmm. passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That goes against yeah, I, conventional wisdom. Why? Because most people are like, oh, I, I'm on top and he's on bottom, so that's how it has to be. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, well, that, that's, that's why. Cool. Cause it's, it's not conventional wisdom. It's just people are it's, so it's, stuck it's, in their yeah, so, so, stuck in their old right. school way. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're stuck. It, that was the whole. So there's a great match uh, with me and Brian Beery, and I sat back for leg locks in IBJJF, which is a no no. Like you'll get yeah, swept. You might give up too, right? You yeah. might get swept, right? So I'm like. But the whole time he's trying to come up, I'm using inside foot position to stand back up and pass his guard. And after three leg lock attempts at a certain point, I stood back up and I knee cut because I just fucking just – he could, didn't know what to do, I guess, at a certain mm -hmm. point, I'm assuming. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. yo, I'm just going to go. Oh, and another match against me and John Henson, it went back and forth, but I passed his guard. I knew exactly where we were. I kept track of everything. The, the the match that fucked me on that one was the Hugo match because I forgot where the points were and I went for a bolo and I thought, <laughs> fuck, I'm going to – or I thought I was on bottom, but, man, if I would have stalled and closed guard, I would have won that world title or that, that Nogi Pants title. So it's kind of mm. funny. It's just – I don't like to stall either, so I'll fucking just go. Let's is just, that, a, is that an example fight. of the rule sets kind of holding back the sport too? Because you just said, well, if I played the rules, I would have won, but I'm trying right. to enhance my game and, and, you know, make my game go further. No, it, it, if you if you don't like the rules, then don't play the fucking sport. Mm -hmm. That's my no, opinion no, to everybody no, who no, complains no, about no, any no, rule no, set. No. Then don't, don't fucking play the game. 
Yeah, which a lot of people, don't. a lot of people don't want to fight IBJJF for that reason. Then don't, but you're gonna go in then there, don't, don't become a, then don't become a five-time world champion or seven, twelve yeah. world time, and then then fuck off and fuck on and don't become Bashesha or. I think people, I who gives a shit then? I think okay. people got to realize what their goal is. Be, they got to realize. Yeah. You know? Realize your values. Don't devalue yourself. And go for it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, I mean, how many times, Tex, have you heard people like me and Brian and, and guys that we trained with over the years, how many times did they come back from an IBJJF tournament and say, oh, well, I got scored on and the guy I held down. I was fucked. I was fucked yeah. over. Yeah. I was, and I'm like, hey, guess what? If you wouldn't have... If you would have been better at jujitsu, you would have won. Mm -hmm. Well, and not so only that, how about know what your rules set you in and play the game? That too, yeah. that too. But also, like, you know, just fucking, you you lost. Stop right. blaming something else. Blame mm. your fucking self and say, hey, I lost today. Like, fuck right. it. Like, dude, you can take, I can take everything I do as a winner or a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be like, fuck, I'm going to go pick up the kids that, 12 today because they got soccer at one and then you fuck that up as a parent you're like well i fucked that one up i felt and it happens yeah like you win and lose these marginal battles every fucking day mm -hmm. you know like yeah. yeah and then uh talk about inside control and pummeling okay. i went my whole career right i went i we weren't allowed to do any type of toe holding knee barring until right. we had brown belt right i get to black belt i even opened an academy and then i still don't know inside control and leg entanglements until rich burn comes in with right. eddie cummings <laughs> you know and eddie cummings rips this all up and then rich starts to introduce me to the first two or three leg pummels which i mean if you do any type of upper body pummeling which everybody does mm -hmm. how do you not realize that there's lower body pummeling too and it just opens up it opened up my whole game and i didn't learn this to black belt how insane yeah. is that but i just went to your point of the inside control that's what we're talking about leg pummeling getting in there mm -hmm. that even just helps anything as far as your guard goes your gi game it's, yeah. it's something everybody that should really do at an early stage in their careers of just a lot of a lot of people they don't know that the the best the 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 knee that matters most in like ashi or single leg x or outside thing is is the is the inside leg the inside leg is your most vulnerable on 50 50. your inside leg on single leg x is the most important leg for them not to pass and get chest to chest so it's arguably the most important leg anyways is that inside frame as they would call right. it, or inside wedge, mm -hmm. you know? You don't know the Japanese term for that, Tex? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I barely speak English some days. I... <laughs> uh, so actually, I wanted you to go into, because one of your most famous matches is from Kasai when you tap Felipe Pena. Yeah. And that was like absolutely insane. Being there live was, was, was amazing. Uh, can you go into the lead up? Like, definitely, you were the un underdog in that match. I think Felipe Pena was like, okay, I'm going to fight. He had really not, you know, maybe he did some trying to defend heel hooks and leg locks, but not really learning it. Uh, I yeah. think maybe so, just like, you know, ripping his leg out. And then you did what you did. So, what, go into that. Whoa. I did. I did what I did. You mean he faked the tap and then looked at the well, ref? Yeah, that, that's then, a whole separate okay, story too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, then what I did was I, I completed a uh, a very nice heel hook on a uh, full one Felipe Pena. So the lead up to that was like you knew he didn't he, train really as much as you and Lex. Uh you know. I didn't know shit about Pena. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't care who Pena was. Didn't I don't know the dude. Don't care about him. He's not my guy. So um it started off uh he actually came and trained with us at Unity and then left to go to go to Henzo's with Gordon, which was really like funny to me. But like Eddie was training with us and Eddie goes text man, like Philippe's been sitting out rounds like watching you roll and I'm like, that's cool. So in my head, I'm like, yo, like, he's already thinking about me. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about him. I don't know shit about him. You know, like, again, if if I hadn't had Marul through that, like, Marul let Felipe Pena come there and then let him watch me roll. And I, I fought through that adversity of – and I, I actually wanted to, like, leave Kasai 
at that point I was like, I'm I'm not gonna take this matches, I'm not gonna do this. Like he's been here all week. Like I had a fucking mental breakdown at one point on the mat with one of my friends Chloe and she's like text. She's like, No, 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 no. She's like, You're gonna do this. She's like, You're gonna be fine. And I was like, Okay. And I was like, All right, I'll do it. Oh, he was just visiting. Because, yeah, he was just visiting. And and then I respect the Marillo. I respect Marillo, whatever right. it's his mats. I don't fucking I don't fucking say nothing to nothing. All right. So he tells me, he's like, hey, text on friends with Homolo. Uh, Felipe's going to come. I was like, cool. Whatever. You know, like, I respect that. All right? New gym, my whatever. But it got it got really, like, I, I think I tried to, I try and be personal with people. I try to be liked. Right. I try to be known. I try to talk to you. And I felt like, you know, I, I said something to him, like, hey, I hope everything's fine. You know, blase, blase. And kind of like smirked at me and like went, uh. and i'm like oh whatever dude like you're too cool for school i'm not cool enough for you it's whatever and and that's that's a problem i have probably maybe a little mm -hmm. problem who knows so it, it just like okay well fuck you i'm gonna focus on me anyways i should have been focusing on myself i shouldn't even went over there it doesn't matter right. but then he left and you know it was fine but i it was it was a hard fight. That was a hard tournament to get ready for, um, with everything that had gone on. That was a, and it changed that one changed my fucking life, man. For the mm -hmm. for the weirdest the weirdest turns of whatever the fuck happened. <laughs> did uh, did so, Eddie roll with Penna at Unity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So Eddie Eddie would roll with Penna, and it would dude Eddie gets everybody in fucking inside saddle like. Like, I don't give a fuck who you are. You've been put in an inside saddle by Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Once. Plenty. Every time you roll with him. It doesn't, even if you're, I, I like, I remember getting out of him and that was just the battle. That was just like, like, dude, if I can escape inside saddle with Eddie Cummings, then fuck anybody else. Like, you don't even fuck, fuck you. I don't give a shit. Like, I'll let you put me in inside saddle now just to figure it out with other people because the way Eddie did it, the, just his, he was a specialist and also the reason why he could be a specialist in one thing is because he pretty much understand he understood everything else and i think that's where people maybe you know do some things wrong they need to conceptualize these things they're not theories we know what they are at this point we know what jiu-jitsu is we know you know we, we know about the inside controls. We know about this. We know about knee line placement, hip line placement, the shoulder line, to all this stuff. You know? A triangle's been a triangle for how long? Since the uh, beginning of time, right? <laughs> People yeah. have been fighting yeah. probably, you know? We, we, yeah. So there you go. I mean, it is what it is. So mm. so then yeah. that, that match itself, Panna, right? You guys, you're going yes. in there. And then right where you start getting... You know, the the. the Are you leg? watching it? You're watching it right now, aren't you? You should watch it, and you should. He, he watch probably it is. He probably yeah, oh, well, is. you're talking. I do that a lot. It? Let's let's do that. We we actually gonna splice that video in this podcast when it comes out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but when you would actually hit down, and people are like, "Holy shit, he's tying up this guy's legs," and then "Holy shit, he's gonna fucking heel hook Felipe Pena," and then yeah. the whole reaction to it. Now, obviously, you you going you're going ape shit. So then, you know, that what was the whole thing with? Oh, you tapped him, but then he thought it was held too long. Yeah. So what had happened was is, I mean, I was pretty excited, but I was also like concerned for him because it popped like four times. But at the time, the ref looked at me and said, let go. So I let go at that at the time that he started rapidly tapping. There was a time where he was turning. He grabbed inside of my thigh like this, like mm. twice like this kind of really hard. And I'm like, he's trying to open my knee line to see if he can straighten his leg. Right. And if you're a fucking idiot and you're like, oh, no, Texas is just being a dick. It's like, no, you fucking moron. That's how you open the knees to get your fucking knee line straight. Like, learn jujitsu or get the fuck out of here, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought it was. It was him trying to, but I was also actively not letting him do that. So he yanked twice and then he spun through and I'm like, this motherfucking idiot. 
Like, no, I'm sorry, but like in my, my mind, I'm like, dude, this guy's just, he just wants to get his knee fucked up. Mm-hmm. So as soon as the ref said stop, I stopped. I got up and I was like, yeah. And I see him laying there, like his hands on his face. And I'm like, oh shit, the dude's hurt. So I go over there, can like to see about him. He pushes me. And I'm like, all right, fucking kick rocks, bro. Like I used to care, but. Yeah. I don't fucking care anymore. Like, dude, you showed that you don't. All right, fuck you then. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, how petty? How 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 do we need to be then? Who who? Oh, we all need to be respectful. Okay, well, I can be respectful. Then we'll show respect all the time, not some mm. of the times. Well, I, I was it. having I was I was having a bad day. Well, yeah, Ukraine's having a bad day right now. Let's go talk about having bad days, motherfucker. <laughs> like, put yourself in a perspective. You're in fucking life. Oh, yeah. it was a bad day. My shit was acting up. It's not oh, an when, excuse for your fucking When you act. said, he, uh, yeah. it, it, when it, you it, said it, he was an idiot for turning, like, yeah. it just seemed like he just didn't it know what to do in that. Lo- he didn't. Even Gordon called him out on it. He's like, dude, you did the back step to the wrong, to the wrong leg lock. You thought mm-hmm. you could spin through. You can't spin through on that leg lock. So it's just a lack of knowledge in the leg entanglement. So that's that's it. It's not like, I mean, but like, I obviously, Felipe Pena is not a fucking idiot. He's no, a fucking no, genius. 100%. He has all, so I didn't, but like, I'm like, fuck, like this dude really just wants his knee fucking just, because I had the full, like full blown heel grip. Like there was mm. no escaping mm. that. And I yeah. hit hip line control. It's like. Did you have uh? did you have wrist to wrist or did you just have. Wrist to wrist. Yeah. Wrist oh, to wrist. Man. That's the deepness right there. Damn. <laughs> yeah, and like I think everybody asked me about like everybody does like the thing about me is is I like um the system of I go to hip line control and then straight to heel control. Like I don't I don't fuck around. Like there's no like I'm gonna but I also play this straight ankle lock system which turns into all that stuff very simply. You know, because a lot of people I'll go straight ankle lock instead of heel hook a lot of times because the heel hook is much easier to, to slip. You know, mm-hmm. at this point in time, if you don't know how to slip your fucking heel, you shouldn't be competing. Honestly. You're way behind. Like, yeah, you're, yeah. yeah, you shouldn't. If your coach doesn't know how to teach you how to heel slip, then you got to find another gym, bro. Or or just be just don't go compete because you're going to get heel hooked at a certain point. And I think at this point now, if – in no gi, I don't not for gi, but white belting up, leg locks legal. Fuck it, put them out there. You know, how are you going to teach people to be better? Let them know. Like, look, this is it. But again, we have a lack of knowledge in it in right, right. places, and we have a lot of people teaching them that I feel like are consulted as like gurus on them, and it's like, dude, there's only. It's not that. It's not. It's it's not that we don't know, man. Like we get it, yeah. So mm. just let it happen now. Just let the the leg locks occur. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred I mean, percent. I agree. Knee injuries, knee injuries are not that bad. <laughs> you can get surgery. You can get, you know. Right. And- but it's, it's yeah. It's not only that, but when you are familiar because you're taught at a at a level that's in the yeah. beginning it's just like an arm bar if a white belt right. a white belt extends an arm he doesn't know that the arm is an inch away from being blown out right. the same thing when you when you lock the heel on and you don't push your hips through you people don't know when they're caught in there that they are caught like right, right. you know what I mean? right nobody right. yeah. knows that they're caught until they're caught though i mean right. even until yeah. he's caught. Yeah. you know what i yeah. mean yeah. so yeah. But, it doesn't matter it's your it's it's your we'll, we'll say it the cliche it's your ego that gets you there that got yeah. you. It's like I tell people, I'm like, you chose to be injured in a lot of situations. Mm-hmm. Well, especially, especially hobbyists and white belts and, and stuff like that. J- James, James popped my arm the other day. Okay, no, you popped your arm. You could have stopped <laughs> it. Right. You yanked too hard. And there is some yanking too hard, but it, and then and then it comes to the whole like professor thing, like, well, now what do I do? Mm-hmm. I sit this guy down, I reprimand him. And go through those mm. steps because you can't have a guy hurting your students, right? So there's that whole scenario. Yeah. Well, but yeah, with leg locks for sure. Let's open it up. Let's fucking yeah. by now. Why not? 
Well, and I think on that point, you know, if you open it up and you have white belts, right? You have white belts doing it. When you're starting to do it at brown belt or whatever the case is, people like, you know, I'm at a different level. Like, I'm not going to give in. They're going to be a little more hard on the fight, possibly, versus a white belt who learns to tap two things when they're uncomfortable. For sure. Mm. Well, I mean, Meg, here's the thing. And, and that's the problem, especially with anything. Like, we just had the match with... Uh, who didn't just have it, but it was, what, two years ago, I think, Craig and Vinny. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. His leg's going to heal. He's going to go back to competitions. He's going to go to ABCC. But, like, I think people as a whole, humanity as a whole human, you know, they're like, oh, man, if I get my knee popped, what's going to happen? It's like, you go to training tomorrow, the next day. Hmm. I've seen the meows do it. I've These are the same guy guys that get their arm or, or shoulder yeah, popped with like, more, but I they're show, showing up the next week. Yeah, I show. I, I've seen guys come, come to – Pro training the next day after hand surgery. <laughs> well, hand, you, hand surgery, emergency hand surgery, <laughs> ligament attachment surgery, bro. And you're saying you can't compete because your toe hurts or you can't train. Right. You can't drill. You can't right. you can't drill because your toe hurts. I can't have you as a student then. Like, come on, yeah. we gotta talk yeah. about this, bro. Like, yeah. I'm not asking you to give me Vinny Magalesh, but I am asking you to like, what do you mean? Your toe hurts? Okay, well, you can train. It's not gonna right. kill you. Pain is pain is pain. And that's the difference, obvious and pro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's like, but I think, how do we get, what is deeper than that? It's just the Mm. way we've become so much right now because everything's been so easy. Yeah, well, I mean, and think about it too. Is there just a certain, like certain people, like you talked about, you were doing martial arts as a kid, right? You know, like a lot of us who have been doing this our whole lives, like you just have a totally different mindset. Like I separated my shoulder, like popped it back in next day I was training. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, you know, you just, you don't even like think about it. You just go, okay, whatever, fix, good. I'm not feeling well, okay. I'm still going to go train or whatever. You know, is are people just, I guess my question is, right, for you, do you think people are sort of born that way or we raise that way like what is it in our mindset you're going into Uh, nature you're going into nature nature versus nurture then a little bit you know what i I mean how many how many hits to the face before you become hitler i mean or (laughs) or michael jackson or right you know or president trump or whoever the how (laughs) that's a that's a tricky (laughs) subject um do i think success is genetics no i don't think there's a gene that makes people successful uh, at all so i uh i would hate to be the guy who had the gene that made him instead of the man who made himself right that's that's kind of a fucked up that again you're giving something an outside uh that's right. you're giving something an outside uh Are you gonna eat something? uh well, I'm doing an interview right now, actually, and yeah, I'm just... <laughs> I just yes, man. Thank you. We're leaving yeah, this in. <laughs> Don't break a bat. I, I, Don't break a bat. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sure the bat video. Sure the bat video. I didn't know I'd be harassed for sitting here uh, for being a paying customer in New York City. Yeah. Well, wow. it's New York City. Oh, <laughs> Turn the table. Oh, oh, I don't want to do. I just want to. Have just a bend the fork. Just grab the fork right now, Tex, and just bend it. <laughs> I, I can't do that. Really well. No, I know. I just. <laughs> I wish the, the fork the is not real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to your uh, uh, to, to your other point too, the um, I think a lot of people, you know, they say that oh, watch out for the for the the heel hooks because you can really injure your knee, and right. you know, I think that's why they they wait so long to teach a student. Where it's like, no, it should be the opposite. The sooner you teach them, the more they're going to be educated on right. it and avoid it. But but here's the thing. So when I first actually learned leg locks, like because I learned leg locks, I was tapping black belts as a white belt or blue belt with straight ankle locks. Not because I knew what the fuck I was doing, but like I was strong. Like mm-hmm. I squatted 600 pounds at that age, you know? Right. So I was I was doing them. Now I know them and can apply them properly and it's like well that's that's a bad idea like so i learned it when i first learned heel hooks one of the things that we would do is we would get into all the leg entanglements each one and do it thank you and do it for five minutes and it was a game and this Mm -hmm. game was that if you could get a hold of the other guy's heel for three seconds you won Mm -hmm. 
You That's know? awesome. Right. But you didn't tap him. Mm-hmm. You were right. in the wrong if you ripped it and tapped him. No, you just had to secure the heel. And they could mm-hmm. slip, and you did this for five minutes in right. each position. This is a total of an hour or more at a time of mm-hmm. just this. And right. people are like, I, I feel like I feel like I know this position. I'm like, how many times have you been in that position? Mikey talks about it. M- my best situationals are my best situations because I I trained them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like 50 50, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at I'll I'll say I'm pretty good at 50 50. Yeah. I'm okay at it. I beat I have Lovato with 50 50. I beat Lovato <laughs> with 50 50. I beat Felipe Pena with 50 50. I have, I definitely have a pretty good 50 50. I have a pretty good understanding of the inner workings of the Baron Bolo from 50 50, kill hooks from 50 50, exchanges of changing into the saddle from the 50 50. Mm-hmm. Like, all now is that why is that why is, is that because you put yourself in an environment that allows you to drill course. all these stuff? Of course, of course. At your you own know, will. At my own at my own discretion of my body, right? Of getting my knee popped by whoever or getting my foot or getting you know. And and, and it's one of those things like it's so funny that things get so personal, but yet you go on a mat with another guy that's trying to pop your leg and not take it personal, and I can do that. But yet things are taken personally on social media. But like we talk, like this is where my, my head is at with this sport. It's like, yo, know, we're all in a fucking room together sometimes. And mm-hmm. we got to be around each other. And like, who's who's doing what? Like we had the Flavio Almeida, that old dude. What's his Flavio Almeida that got fucking decked by this crazy i guy. watched that i watched right. that that was we were there yeah fucking me you how Fred, yeah. boy yeah hoff hoff and it's like dude if you guys let people like hoff gracie in a sport and say it's gonna be popular i mean i guess it will be i guess the nfl has bad people but dude like i'm fucking tired of that shit though like dude i'm <laughs> dude if we're gonna talk shit then let's just fucking box it out and watch it right. after yeah mm-hmm. or let's just fucking hate each other and fucking tear it apart like Two cool. We have Henzo Gracie, New Wave, B Team, Pedago, and fuck everyone else. Okay, right. That's where it's going right now. It's yeah. literally leading up to this. Atos and I mean Unity will be in there. There's a couple, but honestly, it's it's coming to a head where it's like there's only gonna be so many competitive teams. Yeah. You know? Wow, that's a good point. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're we're almost at NFL, maybe. So, yeah. Well, I, well, so I, I we'll have, to say. We'll have what? That's what. But this is what I've been trying to tell people. Mm-hmm. It's the only way for. I told Cyborg several times. I'm like, bro, there's too many people competing. There's no there's no reason to watch you guys. Fucking you! You think I want to see another fucking blue belt compete? <laughs> or even another black belt. I'm like, oh, cool. It's another black belt. See, that, that's my point. That's the other point. Let's. How about this? Everybody and their mother now is trying to do a, a an event. Everybody and their yeah. mother's got a gi oh, company. Yeah. Every, everybody and their mother's got an apparel company, a Patreon. So, yeah, yeah I just – Yeah. Which is good. I, I But I just got a text from this guy the other night. He's like, what do you think about these geese? It's like, it's a gi? I, I, I hate <laughs> to tell you. I've seen a lot of them. Yeah, and I get I get free ones, so I don't I don't I shout out the whole fast, best company, Greg, all you guys, uh, always supporting me. So I'm like I get them for free. I have I have as many as I need. And he's like ah well I just want to send it to you and let you test it out. I was like all right, be honestly, I'm not test I'm not training right now. Uh, I love that line. Test it out for me. Yeah, <laughs> test it out for me. I'm like all right, whatever you know. He's like what size do you want? Hands. He's like yeah. it's it's show your roll cut. And I'm not talking shit. I mean, okay, cool. Then I want an A2H. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Send it to me. But it's like, dude, like, yeah, like, what is – and now we're in NFTs. And, you know, I'm going to be NFT soon. The whole Kasai, Felipe Pena thing is going to be put as an NFT. Mm. How do how do we make that worth more money, Greg? Yeah, that was – uh... We had Mo on. We had Mo on the show just last yeah. week, and then we had Roger Veer, owner. Of, uh, I don't know if he's the owner of Bitcoin Cash, but he's the, definitely had a lead promoter of it. Uh, he was just the last podcast uh, before you, and um, that was 
definitely part of the discussions. I believe yeah, you know, crypto and NFTs will definitely play a part for sure. Uh, we mm-hmm. talked about it in the sense of, you know, um, amateur local competitions, being able to have people compete and make crypto while they're competing. Uh, even the pro level, it looks like sponsorships, you know, yeah. like, and a la Gordon, you know. Well, um, and they're doing, the, uh, Mo was saying they're doing live NFTs as the yeah. event's going on. As the, at the event, yeah, they're going to mint the, the NFTs. Yeah, all yeah. the champions, they're winning, the champions winning moments are going to be solidified as an NFT, which is, it's kind of great. And it's already behind because uh, Anasanyos already has one. And I think a couple other guys in the UFC already have theirs. So it's mm-hmm. already, but I don't know, like, so what's the digital market going to be? So, you know, what is that? Like this living moment that's going to cost money. Yeah. What, is yeah. It, what does it do? How does it make more money? Like, are you that popular? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if I thought about it, if I was going to do an NFT of anybody, I'd do Dylan Dennis. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, like love him or hate him he's gonna or or or, or logan paul like fuck you like i don't give it like gordon like no i'm, I'm gonna go with these guys like mm. fucking dylan dennis has a million yeah what does he have uh, one point yeah yeah and talk about talk about like logan <laughs> i mean how all that shit went logan down yeah. that's the future Damn. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, but that point about things. with the sports teams, like it's becoming like that. That was a huge, that was a great point. I never right. looked at it like that, bro. Yeah. Like just it's like I tell people, I'm like, dude, just because I don't play in the money doesn't mean I don't look at it and know who I would look at. You know, like, right. like that. I wouldn't be looking at jujitsu yeah. right now. I'd be looking at thriller and all these other things, these pay per view <laughs> ads, like you know, mm-hmm. where I can you know see like, oh, this is how many buys you got. Like, oh, of course we'll sponsor your show. You know, of course we'll invest bitcoin cash into that because and then think of the future of what that's going to hold and nfts and all that you know like Mm -hmm. it's all gonna it's uh, the thing about life is about networking and i don't network very well because i don't like a lot of people so i'll just (laughs) be honest like a lot of people are just here to waste your fucking time and time is the most valuable thing we have you know absolutely so like even like it may be rude, but even if like somebody like starts a small talk conversation with me on Instagram, especially on Instagram, I'm like, bro, like get to a point, like unless we're <laughs> friends right now, don't fucking like, don't bother me with. And then he gear. says, uh, test my gear. Right? Yeah, that's right. That's my gear. And just, just send that's everyone a picture of you breaking the bat. That's it. You know, like, yeah, that's, that's, it. that's what I should <laughs> <laughs> Every response. <laughs> go, so text, go your, your, main, your main Instagram is what? It's just text BJJ, right? Text underscore BJJ. Text yeah. underscore BJJ. Yeah. All right. Any, anywhere else? Uh, anything else you got to shout out? Uh, no. So hopefully I'll be competing subversive in June. Waiting on to see how the treatment goes. Taking two weeks off now uh, to let the stem cells settle and sit my back and hopefully do what they do and rejuvenate my my back and then i have a nogi seminar in kennesaw georgia at rise up bjj and then i have another one at quinn's gym at 10th planet savannah on march 26th so got some seminars coming up and then i'm gonna do some traveling at the end of the year i'm gonna go to istanbul again to teach over there and then i'm gonna go to Cyprus, and then I'm going to go to Russia, and then I'm going to go to Istanbul again, and uh, complete a full full circle tour. Yeah, a world area. tour. Yeah, a little yeah. A little European tour over there. Hopefully, if if nothing if nothing keeps going on yeah. wrong, like hopefully something like gets settled over there. I don't know, like. You're gonna have That's to finish a, your world tour at Hampton Jiu Jitsu again. That's right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can come back and uh, I'll do another. I'll do another seminar at, at Greg's at Hamptons, and Brian, I can meet you out there. And then That's right. Apparently, there's a Kava bar out there we gotta go to. If you guys ever been, we should go do something there. Go out. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think I've, I've heard of that one definitely. Yeah. Um, that's it's cool, uh, man. Another sure. podcast that does it out there, but yeah, let's uh, let's link up, and I'll see you guys soon, right? Awesome, man. Well, guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Make sure you guys follow Tex and keep in touch with what he's doing. He's got a lot going on. Make sure you uh, look up some of the past events that we were just talking about: his match with Felipe Pena, Kasai, uh, his baseball bat video, and uh, we'll be putting that all in the uh, the podcast, man. So, Tex, once again, man, appreciate you coming on. We'll have course, you back on you again. All right, of course, take care. Hang guys. out. We're gonna chat. Bye.